Hey guys, awesome. So everyone was like, yes, let's do a stitch along. So this video is for you. If you are an absolute beginner, if you have no idea what the heck you're doing, I'm gonna show you from start to finish. Well, almost start to finish. That would be like a four hour video. I don't, who would watch that? Um, <laughs> so here is a little look at what we're gonna be talking about in the order we're gonna be talking about it. So if you wanna jump around, please see this. Um, let's go. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna assume you have the kit. If you don't have the kit and you need help with uh, shopping lists, there is one in the directions, but if you need additional help, please let me know. I know where to find stuff in the U.S. If you're not in the U.S., I don't, not, I don't shop not in the U.S., so I don't know where to find things, so I apologize. Um, I usually recommend people start with Kona cotton because it's cheap, it comes in lots of colors, it's thin enough that you can easily transfer the design using a light transfer method. Um, if you do end up going buying some fabric and need to transfer the design, I have many other videos on that and I have a, um, a page on my website with all kinds of information with links to different tutorials and different products you can get. If you have specific questions, please ask me. So we're going to assume that you have done that bit, okay? Um, this I, I actually traced on here so I could see better for the video. I, d I traced the printed design with a jelly roll pen. So that's why this looks crazy. This is what I'm actually going to do on camera is just this section. I think it gives a good good overview. We're going to get to kind of tackle a bunch of different um, interesting things there. So blah blah. Here is a hoop and a cat hair and um, this is just one of those super cheap ones. I don't even know. It's not even Darice. It's like that cheap. It doesn't even say what brand it is. Um, so it's super important, guys. If you're new, make sure your fabric is tight, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to get your, your fabric down there on top of your bottom hoop. Put your top hoop on the top <laughs> like this. Now, if you hate these wooden hoops, don't get a wooden hoop. <laughs> There's like high quality wooden hoops you can get with it. You can actually use a, um, oh no, a screwdriver <laughs> to, um, to tighten. Uh, or you can get plastic or you can get metal. Find one that works for you. These ones are light, which I like. They're cheap, which I like. You can decorate them easily, which I like. Most of the time I can manage the tension just fine. Um, you could always wrap a hoop like this with some fabric um, or add an extra layer of fabric under here to help with that tension if you're struggling, okay? So here's how I go about tightening. So I'm gonna tighten my screw like this and then I just, I pull down real hard all the way along the edge, getting out all the wrinkles. Now this is why I don't actually iron my fabric. I also don't wash it, in case you cared. Um, let's just keep it simple, right? If you're going to be um, directly embroidering on some clothing, you're obviously going to want to um, wash that first. But this is just going to hang on the wall and look pretty, so who cares? So, by the time you get around and tighten up again, you should have pulled out all of your wrinkles, okay? So there shouldn't be any reason that you want to iron unless you just love to iron. <laughs> who are you? Who loves ironing? Okay. So it should sound like a drum, okay? And I'm not telling you to do that to because I'm mean or I want you to do extra work. It's actually going to make your life easier and your stitches are going to look better, okay? I cringe when I see people posting pictures with, like, saggy fabric. Oh, that must have been really hard to do. <laughs> so give, give yourself a break and uh, make sure your, your fabric's are nice, nice and tight. Okay, what the heck is next? Okay, floss. So this is the fifth time I've stitched this pattern, you guys, so I could not bring myself to use the same colors again. So I am using variegated colors, so at least I can talk a little about a little bit about those as I go. Um, the DMC you pull from the side with the number. Um, the Cosmo is really weird because there's no floss over there, so you have to pull from this side. But I still, I don't know, I tend to get tangles anyways. So you're going to pull... See, what is this? What is this craziness? 
Sometimes there's craziness. Just be, just be gentle. Come on. Okay. Here we go. Nope. So this knot is like the most common knot. Usually there's like a way to pull it and it just disappears. Did you see that? Was that cool or what? Sometimes that, that works for me. Other times it just makes the knot worse. So I don't know. So, okay. I pulled out some floss. I'm pulling out about 18 inches and then I'm going to cut it. Hopefully you have some scissors. I love these. They're not the cutest scissors. Um, but man, they're sharp and they're really lightweight. Um, they're my favorite. Okay. So there's my chunk of floss. You can see with the variegated, I got one side is blue, one side is yellow, and it changes over the center. Some of the variegated floss changes really fast. Like it'll change like five times over a piece this, this long versus this style of variegated floss just has one change. So you're going to get slightly different looks. It's just the more you know. <laughs> okay. So for this, this is technically seven inches. Um, the kits are either six or eight inches, but I'm going to do two strands of floss. We'll pretend we're doing a six inch kit here. So the safest way to pull threads out is one at a time. So I will show you that. So you're just going to kind of like fluff up the end of your floss here and just hold on with one hand and then pull with the other. See, I'm getting all kinds of craziness right over there. That's fun. Whee! Okay, so there's one. And then two. So we're going to use two ply, which is why I'm bothering to do this. Sometimes a pattern will call for using all six. That's our standard here. Is these, This is six-stranded cotton embroidery floss. Sometimes you use just one. Okay, so then I have another way I like to do it when I'm being impatient. Is I, I just make a Y, kind of. Like I pull my two strands from what's left and I kind of hold the bottom like a Y and just pull down like this. If you don't do what I'm doing with my thumbs here, you're going to get a big old crazy knot. So that's the other way to do that. Okay. So then I do have a needle. Here we go. A needle. This one's bent. That's fine. <laughs> so when I when I thread my needle, I'll lick it, my floss. And in this case, because I separated the two strands and brought them back together, I didn't put them back together super even. So I'm a trim. So I have a nice sharp edge here that makes it a lot easier to thread my needle like that. Um, and what size needle? So a lot of times I just have a bunch of size five or size six embroidery needles around. They're like right in the middle. Um, I can get six strands through them pretty comfortably, but they don't make such a huge hole that like I'm irritated. The nice thing about uh, this cotton fabric is that if you do make a hole, you can actually kind of erase it like this. You can get the fibers to go back to how they were. Um, that's kind of a nice thing about the cotton. Um, what else do I want to say about needles? So needles are kind of weird. Like the higher the number, like 9 and 10, that's going to be a really super tiny small needle. So that's what I would use for using like a single strand of floss if I'm doing some thread painting. Um, hey kitty, what's happening? Um, I don't ever use like a one or a two, like those are just really fat. But if that's what you need to be able to see to get the floss through the eye of your needle, then do it. Okay. Um, what else kitty? Anything else about needles? Um, I don't know. I think that's it. Um, I always recommend getting like a variety of pack and that way you can kind of see what works best for you. I actually have a new hoop. <laughs> um, I tried using that dark fabric on that small size and the video was just not great. So, um, I'm using a full strand of floss 
which is not what I recommended, but this is just so you can see better. I'm using lighter fabric. Hopefully that'll help. I did use variegated floss, um, so I can still talk about that as we go. But anywho, that's what's happening now. Um, improvise. Okay, so let's start with the back stitch. So I'm going to go along here, this the, uh, the vine here and some stem. Um, I ended up putting just a knot at the end of my... Uh, my thread here, which is not what I usually do, it's like against the rules or whatever. Um, usually I like to just hold a little tail in the back and use my um, non-dominant hand to kind of uh, maneuver that tail underneath the stitches as I go. And that's a, I only need to do that for the first strand, right? Because then once I have more strands, I'm just going to weave under the previous stitches, like with strand number two. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, these are things that are hard to show when I have my uh, my uh, hoop clamped, so that's why we have a knot. Okay. Um, I have some other videos you can check out about that if that totally confused you. Okay. So back stitch. <laughs> Here is our line. So I'm going to start a stitch length away from the beginning of the line. Like so. Let me get you centered. Sorry. Sort of centered. We'll get there. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go back to the start of my line right here. Stitch one. Then I go further on my line, a stitch length away, and go back into this same hole from my previous stitch. Ta-da! And continue. As you get more practice, your stitches will probably be similar in size. Um, at the beginning, they might not they might not be. You don't need to get out a ruler. Don't worry about it. Um, how long do you want your stitch length to be? Uh, the smaller your stitch length, the more work, the more stitches, but the easier it's going to be to handle curves. So I like to find a little balance. <laughs> Actually, I like to make my stitches as long as I possibly can um, without ruining the curve of my line. So, cause I'm kind of, I'm kind of lazy. Or you could say I like to find shortcuts. Which is weird. You'd think like, you know, we're doing hand embroidery here. You should be a patient person. So that's it. Backstitch. If you want to check out other uh, stitches you can use here. Um, I need a linear stitch, so I did a tutorial on lettering. So any of those stitches, there was stem stitch, chain stitch, split stitch, couching, all of those would look great for these stems and vines. And if you want to do, you know, the stems one stitch and the vines another stitch or whatever you know make it your own you can use you could use this pattern really as a as a sampler to practice different stitches oops those are like the worst knots or maybe they're the best knots i don't know they're when you're uh when your floss twists it can twist on itself and create those knots and sometimes they come out super easy other times there's something wrong like with the tilt of the earth and I can't, <laughs> I can't get them undone. I don't know what happens. So one thing you probably can see is that my floss is getting lighter in color because it is variegated and you just, you just get to go with it. That's kind of the fun part of using the variegated floss. Um, usually unless I'm in like the middle of a leaf or something, I won't alter my variegated floss. Like if you want to like cut it in a certain way so that you have access to certain colors, you can do that. Um, but the only time I really worry about it is like if I end a piece of floss in the middle of a shape 
and it would look funny to start with a new color. That's really the only time I will worry about it. So for me, when I was doing these patterns and stitching them up, I just kind of, you know, I, I could have gone this way. Like, it's really up to you how you want to, how you want to stitch this, what order you want to stitch it in. Um, whatever. Like, sometimes I like to do, like, one strand of the greens and then one strand of another color if I'm getting bored. Like, there's really, do whatever you want. <laughs> do what feels good. Okay, so there we go. There's our back stitch. So now, since I'm here, I'm going to move on to satin stitch right here. Um, so when I do satin stitch, I like to, well, for leaves, I like to have my stitches like parallel with the length of the leaf versus horizontal, which is also an option. When you go horizontal, you're just going to be doing more stitches. So once again, it's kind of my shortcut lazy like oh sweet let's cheat um, also I just like the look of the going longer especially with the tip kind of lining up with an actual stitch so you can get skinnier if that makes sense um, so let's do that so for a satin stitch I like to start in the center of my shape in this case it's going to be right along the vein of a leaf here uh, if you want to draw in line directions ahead of time please do. Just use like a water soluble pen or whatever. Um, here you can see I have some twisting of my thread which is going to create some texture. Um, if I was only using a single strand of floss I wouldn't have that obviously and you'll have less of it using the, the two or three ply like the pattern calls for. Um, and that's just the nature of using more strands. So okay so I'm just going to make a series of parallel stitches. I'm going to go down right side here come up right next to the first stitch along my guideline I've got lotion on my hands so I'm not all crackly but it, it makes the needle a little slippery okay um, and then right back down here Ta -da! and continue <laughs> And back down. And we have some nice color changes happening here. So one thing that's going to happen because I have this color changing and I'm going down one side and the other, I might have a little stripe here once I finish up that side. So we'll see how that looks. So the reason I do that center stitch is it, it acts as a guideline to help me keep my stitches consistent in the same direction. Um, if you start at one edge, it might be a little trickier to do that. I, I tend to see like a change in my direction over time when I start at the edge. So I like doing a center line first. It looks like I have a little tiny bit of my guideline still showing through here. So you, I don't know if you notice, I'm, I'm definitely covering my guideline, maybe in excess. I, I don't want it to show, and I'm using this full strand of floss, so I am definitely making my shapes larger than called for. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going on the left side, and it doesn't matter what side you start on with that. Here you go. Actually, we didn't get a we didn't get a big line. It actually matched up perfectly. Our color change there, but that'd be okay if it did. Um, you can see some of my other sample pieces have stuff like that, and I know it's just kind of the nature of using the variegated floss. So, um, so I'll demonstrate this one too. I mean, it's just going to be the same, except we need to pay attention here so that we aren't messing up our E. We want to make sure we have a really sharp line there. So uh, how about I do this? I will demonstrate what it looks like to actually do a stitch here. This is optional, but it can kind of help um, keep that line and make it a little more, basically it makes it almost padded on that side. 
Oh, I hope you guys can't hear that. There's a man outside uh, cutting concrete. Um, he's down the street now, but he was literally outside my window <laughs> all morning. And today is the only day we don't have rain the rest of the week. I was like, man, when's that guy going to go get lunch? Hopefully he'll go eat soon. It's not as bad as it was. Mm -hmm. Sorry if it's distracting. I shouldn't have even said anything. Okay. So I'm just doing the same thing I did on the other leaf. I'm just following a different shape. That's it. I might have to get a thimble. Or wash off this lotion. <laughs> it's so slippery. <laughs> this time of year is so hard. Usually, I should say, I don't use lotion when I'm usually stitching because it can get on the fabric and over time cause grossness, like the oils. So I actually usually wash my hands before I stitch. Alright, so see how much floss I have left? I'm going to pull this through and then weave the tail using my needle behind these stitches here and grab a new needle. Okay, I grabbed a new needle and here we can see the two ends of my, my floss that I kind of have pulled out here. So I'm going to be doing my next stitches here. So I'm thinking, well, if I go, I mean, <laughs> either way, it's the same color. The point I'm trying to make is, do I want that? You know, this is where you can kind of decide if you want to just go ahead with it, even though it'll create a line, or if you want to, let's see, here it matches. So, I mean, I could just cut here. It's not like I'm wasting that much. So if it was like I had to cut into the middle of the thread, I probably wouldn't bother because I'm cheap. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. So here we go. We'll finish this little bit of satin here. And you can see I'm covering that line I initially made. And so it just kind of gives us, for me, it gives me a little more definition. You can see this color is still a little darker than... I'm still going to get a line, even though I went to the trouble of cutting it. It's not as dramatic. just wanted to show you guys that as an example of what, what you would do if you were concerned about that kind of thing. I say just don't be concerned. I say let the floss just do its own thing. It's cool because everyone's going to have something different with theirs. You know, no one's going to start their floss the same. Okay, let's see, I can fit one more stitch. Excellent. Ta-da. All right, what is next? I said I would do detached chain stitch next. So, for this part, I, I did not draw in my detached chain loopies because I was worried at this blown up scale that I wouldn't be able to cover my guidelines. So I just did dots. Let's see, that was my camera. I'll start down here and then move my camera. So um, I come up at the base of my stitch. I'm going to go back down there. Okay. And I'm going to pull my needle through, but see how I'm holding here, I'm holding a loop. And then I come up at my second stitch here. Well, not second stitch, just second point. And then I pull and I get a nice little loop and here I have some kind of weird twisting But I think I think it's gonna work. Okay, and then I just tack that down Ta -da! All right, let's see it again loop. So we'll go up here and You may notice I am carrying my thread all the way from here to there not recommended a uh, for my videos, obviously, I'm I'm cheating just to save time, but here I am talking about it, so I'm not. But what can happen is that if this thread from here to here gets pulled really tight, it can cause puckering of your fabric. If I do other stitches over that thread, I could also cause puckering. Um, so it's 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 a pretty far jump. One thing you could do is um, like weave weave along to give it a little bit more stability, or just you know don't. Don't do that. Work on this stuff and, and get there when you get there. But okay, 
here we go again. So I went, I went up through my hole, down through the same hole. Here's my, here's where the tip's gonna be. And I pull my loop. Ta-da! So if I do a series of these, like radial from the center, that's how you get a lazy daisy. Okay, let me show you that again, but I'm gonna show you the sewing method, which I clearly don't do. I am a stabber, but I just wanted you to see the difference between being a sewer and being a stabber. Okay, to be a sewer, <laughs> you gotta be way more coordinated than me. You're gonna come up like you were before and go down like we did before. However, instead of pulling through and coming back up, you're actually going to bring your needle immediately up like this. Okay, and I actually didn't do horribly. I don't have such a hard time when I have a larger stitch like this, but with a small stitch, I have a horrible time with the accuracy of that, and then I find it difficult to pull. Oh, especially with lotion, my goodness gracious. Oh, got it. Okay. So obviously it's gonna look the same, and in theory it's faster, but not for me. So do what works for you. If you're a sewer or a stabber, I'm trying to fix my floss here. I had a little, um, See, there's a little bit of a twist going on, probably because this stitch is so big. Like I said, this I've magnified my magnified my pattern quite a bit here, just so it would be easier to demonstrate. And let's see, what is my situation here? A mess. That's my situation. Yeah, that's just going to be funky. We'll move on. Let's do some fern stitch. So same thing with fern stitch. Uh, you can be a stabber or a sewer. I'm definitely a stabber. Um, let's do... It's kind of weird right here because it's all curved. Let's do this one way down here. We'll carry the, the floss way over there. Mm, I'm going to cut it. Okay. All right, so let's look at the fern stitch over here. Um, I'm picking this one because it's we don't have to worry about running into the E, and it's not as curvy. With this one, you can also um, do some stabby, or some, some sewy versus stabby um, movements. I am a stabber, like I said. So I kind of just... I like to treat this almost like a, a backstitch stem, especially in this case, because if I were to do each segment here, oh, an entire stitch, I would lose that curve. You see what I mean? So I'm going to do maybe two stitches per segment on the stem, but then for the little ferns, the little fronds, I'll just do a single stitch since they're straight anyways. They don't have a curve to them. Just like that. So I just kind of, I make a bunch of stitches. If you do the sew method, it's, it makes more, it's, I don't know, more elegant, I guess. I don't know. I'm just judgy of myself. <laughs> I just really think of it as just a, a series of back stitches. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> so here, I'm, I'm going to take this as an extra one here. And then my spiky guys. And then finish that up here. Okay. So it's the same thing when working with the E. You're just going to, you know, if you have to make half, like shorter, smaller stitches to make it work, then do that. 
All right, so let's take a look at this fishbone stitch right here. Um, okay, so I like to come up at the very tippy top of my leaf shape, and I'm gonna go straight down. I drew in a little line here as a guide, not necessary, but it's just something I like to do sometimes. And so I'm just gonna go straight down. And the length of this stitch, you just want it long enough so that it's gonna get covered by subsequent stitches as you cross back and forth. So um, if it's too long, that's fine. If it's too short, that's not fine. So I always kind of overestimate how long it needs to be. So I'm gonna come up on the right side of that stitch, kind of like what we did with the satin, you know, right next to it. And then instead of coming straight down like you would for a satin stitch, you're gonna cross over like this. Go down on the left side of that initial stitch, okay? Now we're gonna go back up on the left and do the same thing. Oops. But cross down on the right. Okay. Etc. Back and forth. I love this stitch. I go into the zone when I do it. Up on the right along our guideline. Oops. So there's where I just pulled up the end of another thread. So there's a reason to keep your backsides tidy. Okay. Up on the left, cross over that center. You can see I'm getting a really nice ombre look here thanks to my variegated floss. Be a lot more work to do this with just single colored thread. So you can play with the angle of your stitches here if you want. I usually have mine pretty parallel with the center vein, but you can Change that angle if you want. Mine always look funny when I do that though. And you can also play with the distance between these stitches. In this case, I really can't because I need to make sure I cover up my guideline. You can see how uh, along the edge here, you're kind of you're getting that leafy look with um. What would that be? It's this texture you're creating that gives that more realistic leaf look instead of a really smooth line. But you can um, make them a little further apart to get another effect. Okay, so you can see here at the bottom, now that I'm getting close to the edge of my leaf shape, I'm having to be a little more careful here about where I put my thread. I obviously don't want to exceed the shape. Um, so I'm kind of, my, if, if this was like an X I'm making, the X on this end is, it's turning more into a, a V is what it's doing. And eventually where I come down here, it's going to converge basically right here at the tip of my leaf. See that I, see I did it a little too soon, so I have a gap there. <laughs> I should, here, let me fix it for you. That was me licking my floss. <laughs> bonking my head into the camera. <laughs> okay. So, I guess that was a what not to do. You know, if you if you don't keep see how my stitches on one side, they're pretty much parallel with each other. If I change that angle, I'm going to have a gap this way, and if I go this way, that's okay. It's just going to take a lot longer to fill the space. Um so here I need to cut down more like right there. And let's see for this one what we can get away with. Yeah, we can go ahead and go to the base here. And then do the same on this side, assuming I have just enough floss. There we go. We could probably use another stitch over here. But that's it. That's the fishbone. Oh, look at this. I'm playing with fire. All right just enough thread. 
Isn't that pretty? All right, so let's try a more difficult shape. All right, I think this leaf here is probably the trickiest one. Um, it's got a cutout of the E right here and then also the cutout of the V, so you got to do some thinking. So I'm going to pretend like that's probably the center. Um, I might not stick to that. I'm probably not because it's just going to be easier to pretend like this is the center here. Um, but sometimes there's like some compensating stitches you have to do basically. So I'm, I'm still going to start center-ish. And I'm going to go down, kind of using, sorry, I'm making a shadow, kind of awkward. Um, I'm just going to go down here, basically right where I drew my line. <laughs> and also, we also have some added complexity here, because assuming the last leaf we did was right side up, this one's upside down. But it's going to be the same, same deal. I'm going to... Go back and forth on either side of my leaf shape here. Hmm. I'm gonna take that out. Feel free at any time to remove your stitches. <laughs> I'm gonna actually do another. Let's see, what am I gonna do? I didn't like how high up along here it was crossing so basically I think I'm gonna just go let's see so nice you can lose your your thread and kind of see like where where do I want this to lay I actually want it to go pretty much in the same hole so that's what I'm gonna do just like that now on this side I We'll do the same thing. All right. Back on this side. I should probably start doing something else. Eh. I'm going to come a little lower on this one. And back over here. And see, I'm basically just baking this up as I go. Now, if you remember at the beginning when I was showing you the satin stitch on that little bud, the leaves on the bud, um, if doing the fishbone in these weird shapes is just, like, not a good time for you, please don't do it. This should be fun. This should be enjoyable. If this is too much work for your brain, then don't do it. Just do the satin stitch instead, okay? Back and forth. This one got kind of weird. I think he's gonna. There we go. He's all better. Okay. So here it's it's not crossing as much just because I have that the initial crossing of the stitches so low because I was trying to work around the E, and that's totally cool. In the preview video I did, I showed some other uh, leaves. I think I did um, some of the lower ones on the E. So if you want to see some more examples of this, that would be a good thing to watch. Alright, so I'm almost at the base here already. Oops, I'm sorry. I have a cat on my lap all of a sudden, adding to the complexity of my situation. So pretty soon on this side, I'm going to have to worry about that little triangle. I think this might be my last stitch over here that is normal. So let me put in a stitch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same angle, but instead of going down, because see if I went straight down, I would get a little notch taken out of my V. Excuse you, boots. So <laughs> I don't want that. So I'm going to... Put my needle down here at the edge, like this, 
And now I'm going to kind of treat, this is like a separate stitch, or I'm sorry, a separate shape. This is like a separate shape. This is a separate shape over there. And I'm just basically going to fill those in with satin stitch, maintaining the same angles. So that's what this looks like. <laughs> Boots for Pete's sake. So, how much fishbone did I actually do on here? Not that much. Um, that's okay. Actually, right here, I'm going to do a little bit of cheating. See how I have, you can see some of my guidelines. I haven't really done a great job of covering. I'm actually going to go all the way down with this one and cover that guideline. Just like that. Okay, so, and you can see that you know, what did I just say about keeping my lines parallel? I certainly didn't do that. Um, I did not maintain the direction of that line. So, again, as far as this pattern goes, this is definitely going to be the, the trickiest part. So you might want to keep that in mind when determining, you know, what what part you want to do first. Um, before I continue that train of thought, I am swapping some floss. So the floss I just pulled has uh, both ends are this darker green. So what I'm going to do is move over here now so that I don't have like a big stripe right there. And then once I finish that section, we'll see, we'll see what I have. Um, so yeah, so what I was saying, um, you might want to do like all the full fishbone leaves to get a lot of practice first if you're new to them and then kind of play with the the ones that are easier like something like this one here in the corner of your screen there or the edge um it's just the tip so instead of like having a um usual leaf stitch you have kind of this broken off end so you know practice with something like that before tackling this kind of bizarre shape So yeah, here I'm just uh, going to fill and do my best to keep this line as crisp as possible. Oops. When I swapped threads, I did not anchor the previous. <laughs> I was trying to make a smooth transition. And look where it got. fuzz I keep pulling through. There's the concrete guy, he's back. I thought maybe he was done and we'd get a reprieve. All right, now I'm gonna go to the other side. My floss isn't as light as it was before, but it is a little lighter, so I won't have such a stark contrast. So, and I'm just going to repeat over here and fill in this shape. Just a lot of floss for this larger leaf. Mm -hmm. 
I'm trying to converge back towards that center part of the leaf there, but I've kind of lost my angle, but that's okay. Looks more like satin stitch, but I don't think anyone's going to uh, take a look at this and tell me I did it wrong. Sometimes it's easy to get stuck on the little details and realize that, you know, no one, no one else is going to see that. <laughs> the little mistakes that look so big to us, you know. Okay, that's it. So, let's move on to some pink. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the French knots first since we've already done satin stitch. I will show the satin stitch after if you want to hang out. So I've got a couple French knots here we're going to do. So with them you're going to come up through your fabric. This is a two-handed stitch. So I have my needle in one hand and I have the thread here and my left hand. I'm going to make sure I have it tight. I'm going to take my needle and this thread and I'm going to go one. I'm just going to do one. Uh, you can do like up to three. I find it easier to do less wraps. So that's what I'm going to do. So then I'm still holding tight here with my left hand. I'm going to come and put my needle next to the hole that I just went up through. If I go down through the same hole, I have a very good chance of just making a knot, but it will not be in the fabric anymore. <laughs> So here I'm going to go down, and before I pull it all the way down, I'm, I'm switching my hand to the bottom here, so here I am. I'm making sure that this on the left is tight, and then I pull down, and I'm going to hear a pop. Ta-da, that's the sound you want, and then I kind of, oops. <laughs> Sorry, we'll pretend I didn't have a big tangle there. There we go. There it is. A little French knot. Let's do it again. Okay, up. So, sorry, that, that knot's because I have just way too long of a piece of thread here. I'm going to wrap once. Go back down right next to it. Pull tight on the left. Pop. <laughs> There's that knot again. Ta-da! All right, here's another one. Oops, it's probably that knot got stuck again. <laughs> the longer your thread, the more likely you are to get knots in it. Of course, the less often you have to get more thread. So there's some balance there. There we go. Wanna see more? Got a couple more on here. Do this one. At the, we'll do this one first. It's closer. Wrap once. How about I wrap a couple times this time? One, two. Although that's confusing. Was that two or three? Because I wrapped twice, but it looks like there's three around me. Anyways, it doesn't matter. You saw what I did. <laughs> so that's harder for me to pull through. Because there's more wraps on that thread, right? That makes sense. But I'm also, you can see the knots are bigger. So, things to think about. I I just have more luck when I do a single wrap, so that's what I usually try to do. Because then it's they're more consistent. We'll do, we'll do that again. We'll do another big one. Awesome. That one's like super cute. Okay, moving on. Should we do, let's do this guy. So I'm going to do some satin stitch to fill this. So you've, ever, you've seen everything. Go ahead and go play. Have fun. If you want to hang out and watch some satin stitch, you're more than welcome. So for this, I might do something a little different. Um, I am working with variegated floss. You know, I, I probably, well, I'll show you since I already brought it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna 
instead of going down one side and then the other like we did for the leaves here, I'm going to go back and forth. And the reason for that is because that way we will have a more um, consistent color change down both sides because we're using that variegated floss. If you weren't using variegated floss, you wouldn't. You could still do it this way if you want. And sometimes I find myself doing this when I'm not using variegated floss, just out of habit. Going back and forth. There is a difference going from top to bottom with these satin stitches. I used to try to like save floss by like instead of going back up, I would I would come back up here and go like this kind of thing to save the tiniest bit of floss. And honestly, it, I think it ended up, t I just did it. Oh my God. <laughs> Cause I was talking about it. Oh, well, shoot. <laughs> Don't ask me to multitask. My goodness. That was funny. Okay. <laughs> do not do. Anyways, the reason I don't actually like to do that is because it's just, I don't know, for me it's actually faster to do it the right way. Also, apparently, the way the cotton is actually made, there is like uh, the slightest bit of difference um, in how it looks from one end to the other. I'm not explaining that well at all. Um... That basically, ultimately, it's easier to go from top to bottom over and over. Like, how much floss was I actually saving? Not much. So for the other buds and for the flowers, it's the same thing. Um, just more satin stitch and... You know, do what you need to do to move around the letters, and that's it. If you guys have questions or want to see more of anything, please uh, leave a comment below. I'm sure I missed something. So you can see how the, now the edges of this bud are a little bit lighter than that center. And it's even from the center, the gradation. So now the tricky part is, I mean, my next piece of floss, I need to start with that lighter pink. And let's see. That is not the color. <laughs> is that it? And that's not it either. Hmm, that's interesting. It looks like it goes from those colors and then it turns hot pink. So that's what we'll do. That's what the floss dictates. Just tying it out here real quick. Okay, so we can finish up. I don't I can't leave this undone. It's almost done. Cover my guideline very well with that last stitch. Oops. Hmm. Make sure I get even with my leaf here. Okay, and finish over here. I didn't go back and forth on that one just because the stitches were so small. Figured we wouldn't lose that much of the color change. But again, it's up to you. It, it's what's going to make each piece unique. If it totally stresses you out to use the variegated, you know, don't. This, this pattern will look just as pretty with solid colors, so... it I think so thanks so much for watching and um, have fun